Welcome to episode 51 of Talking Prisoner. I have a very special guest with me today. He needs no introduction. The term legend gets thrown around many times in this world and the media, but this man is a true legend of Australian TV. I'm talking to oh, me. Ian Smith. Oh, hello. Welcome to Talking Prisoner. Thanks for joining us. The, uh, the fans went absolutely crazy when we made the announcement that you're coming on. Oh, you're uh, all right. very well loved Thank all you. over the world, Thank you. especially the UK. Um, but before we get into sort of neighbours and prisoners, yes. can we have a little bit of chat about your life growing up? All right. Okay. Where, where did you grow up as a child? Well, I grew up in Williamstown, a yeah. uh, seaside uh, resident, uh, 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 a seaside area of, of Melbourne. Yes. Uh, best place in the world for any kid. I'm sorry, I'm speaking a bit funny. I've just had a tooth out. Uh, best um, uh, place in Melbourne for any kid to grow up. Definitely. Um, it was fabulous. Loved it. Uh, it was under false pretenses, as I found out later. Uh, I thought I was being brought up by my mother and father. I later found out they were my adopted mother and father. Oh. Didn't find that out until I was 54. It was a bit wow. late in life to find out. But uh, hey, I wanted for nothing. I was spoiled rotten. <laughs> um, but I never knew why I was absolutely useless at school. And <laughs> just wanted to daydream and, and, you know, do things like that. I later found out. Um, but my education, unfortunately, was uh, under the auspices of the Catholic Church. Uh, so all I was good for when I left school was to be a priest and uh, couldn't put two and two together. Uh, so I, I started working. Um, I left school at 14, in point of fact. And what was it like finding out you were adopted? What was that moment? Oh, I can't tell you. I got a phone call, uh, my wife and I got uh, a phone call from my mother. I thought it was my mother. Uh, it was my mother. Um, one afternoon she was in tears and we naturally thought she'd had a bad result from her doctor or something like that. Anyway, she wanted to see me immediately. And I got up there, um, I, she opened the door, she'd been crying a lot and uh, all she could, well, I suppose, blurt out was, Ian, you are adopted. And apparently I went as white as that sheep there. Wow. And she said, oh, look, oh, look, he's turned white. He didn't know. Well, how the hell? I, I almost said, well, how the hell could I know? Nobody told me. Um, but anyway, then uh, that was that. And so uh, a second part of my life began from that moment. Uh, immediately I didn't want to uh, meet my biological mother. I don't know why, I didn't hate her or anything like that, I just yeah. didn't want to. Um, but after a few weeks, curiosity took over because I realised that she was, I was told that she was 14 when I was born. Oh wow. Yeah, so, um, and that she had been raped by a pedophile naturally when she was 13. Okay. Um, so uh, I found out slowly through all the legal ways that you find out where she was and I wrote her a letter and um, I said um, I don't want to meet and stay with you or I just want to meet you once, natural curiosity. Um, the next, uh, I, I posted that, what a reply a day and a half later. Uh, please let us meet. And so I did. I went out and meet her. I, I was determined I was going to be uh, tough. <laughs> I wasn't. I blubbered like a baby, um, as she did, but not as much as me. We <coughs> sat down for the rest of the day in the kitchen, in her kitchen, and we just talked. The funny thing was, <laughs> I sort of felt halfway through that I was applying for a job. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. It was very strange. Very strange here. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing that with us. Mm. Yeah, we've done, uh, this is the 51st episode we've done, and everyone we've spoken to, all the actors and actresses, have said maths was their most unfavourite subject at school. Oh. <laughs> Except Lois Collin. Oh, uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she really? said she loved maths. Oh, well, yeah. she, oh, freak. Well, <laughs> well, she was called, what was she called? Um, Alice Lurch. Lurch, yeah, that's right, yeah. What was your favourite subject at school? Oh, uh, writing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I remember writing a, a story about a ship sinking and three chaps getting off on the lifeboat and uh, they spent days just looking at each other. 
and uh, finally the, the, the rescue boat turned up, blood everywhere. And the guy said, God, you must be hungry. He said, no thanks, I've had plenty. <laughs> and it was Christian Brothers and he thought I was quite sick. Well, that was. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, and what, what are your hobbies in life now? Oh, sense? fly fishing. Uh, it, it's my life. Why it's not? my life. Uh, fly, fly fishing, well, any fishing. I'd, I'd fish in a car park puddle if, given, <laughs> if there was no, nowhere else to fish, but yeah, fly fishing. Yeah, there's some great spots in Melbourne to oh, fish. Oh, yes, yeah. indeed. Fantastic. Beautiful rivers walk up, put your waders on walk up. And um, it's why you want. It's, it's funny when you're missing a tooth. Um, it's funny um, how, how you wish to go out. Yeah, and I want to go out in the middle of a river. river. <laughs> yeah, not drowning, just a hard, quick heart attack thing. Yeah. Funny, only last week he said he wanted. No, that <laughs> What's your favourite food? Seafood, I'm guessing? Or? No, uh, yes, but uh, Japanese and Italian. Nice. Mm. Wow. Now, you're a few, huge fan of the UK police drama The Bill, which was sadly axed in 2010, yeah. but you even went and visited the Yes, state. I did. Oh, and I, I was a groupie. I, uh, I had the best time. Um, I met, oh, I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name. That's okay. But uh, shook hands. It was quite awkward about the whole thing, you know, as people are when they shake hands with me. I think, what's wrong with you? It's only me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but it was fun because it was it was a product of its age, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, it wouldn't stand up now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it, I was quite taken. I was quite carried away. Fantastic. He also played Russell Ashwood in <laughs> Bellbird. What was it like being on Bellbird? Such an age? oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, people say, "Oh, we're all a family," you know. Of course we are. But we were in Melbourne. Melbourne yeah. and it was uh, a lot of us were doing something for the first time. That includes included cameramen, uh, directors, writers. Uh, it, it was a discovery journey for the for the whole lot of us. Yeah. And um, it it was good. And if you used your brains, you came out of that. I don't know how long I did that for. Do you know? Um, no, I, I could look it up. I think about eight years. I'm not yeah. sure, but I think about eight years. Yeah. Uh, and it was a beautiful idea. Yeah, it, it, it really was. And also, it launched me from uh, going. To, pardon me. Uh, being in the cattle call for the going for a part. Yes. To oh, hello, Ian. Yeah. Uh, so it was that thin ice that was broken, and it was up to me to take advantage of it. And uh, I worked at it. I really worked at it because I knew this was my business. I yes. knew it was my business. And uh, the ABC were very, very good to me. Uh, well, I suppose so I, I tried to be good for them too. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, we got on. Fantastic. We fell in love. <laughs> now, you appeared in a few Crawford productions prior to mm. working for Grundy's and Just shows all of them, I think. Homicide, Matlock Felice, Ryan, Division 4, and Bluey. What was yeah. it like working with Crawfords compared to Grundy's? Uh, a bit more. Uh, come on, guys, five minutes. Yeah. A bit more of that. Yes. Uh, but still very pleasant and once again learning a different way of working the business. Uh, it was, uh, no, I'm not, well, okay, let's say commercial as opposed to, well, ABC was almost theatre, uh, almost television versus theatre. Yeah. Which I just come out of theatre to do um, uh, Bellburn. Okay. So uh, it wasn't that much of a jump, except. Uh, when you're in the studio in those days, uh, it was three cameras. It's only two these days. By gosh, I <laughs> found it strange only working with two, two cameras. cameras. I did. Well, yeah. Yes, I just remembered where we worked before. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, yes, and uh, you shouldn't do this, of course. And you, you always say, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't work out which camera I was going to play to. You know, but you do. You yeah. do. And um, they know you do, so they try to fill you a little bit. But uh, that's when you get the interesting shots. That's good. It's good yeah, fun. Definitely. And when you're with a show for more than, well, a few years, uh, you get to know the cameraman, you get to know the director. Yep. And that's the most important thing. Yes. And you know how he's going to work, and that's how you learn your script. A lot of people are surprised at that, but I don't see why they are. 
because you know this man is going to work differently to the way the, the last week's producer worked. So you, you have to fit in. You have to meet him halfway. He doesn't know he's meeting me halfway. I suppose he's got tricks that he's using on me too that I don't know. But um, yes, that's uh, that's how it works. That's how it works for me. I was a bit slow to catch on, but. Uh, then a, a very old actor who once told me, that's, okay. that's what you do. Well, uh, when we spoke to Ian Bradley, he said there was oh. a real rivalry oh. between um, Grundy's and Crawford's at the time. Yes, there was. And you know Ian Now, there's a, there's a magician. <laughs> no, Ian Bradley. Well, okay, he gave me the, probably the biggest start. I was, um, I, I just came out of a, a bad work period. I wasn't getting the work I wanted. I was working in a place called Dirty Dicks. I was sort of like... Oh, Dirty Dicks? Yeah, the theatre restaurant. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. And uh, one of the musicians, uh, Dave Worthington, uh, on the guitar, he came up to me one night and he said, what would you th how would you feel about being a script editor? I said, what? <laughs> no, I, well, I don't feel anything. I've, I've never even thought of it. He said, well... Uh, Ian Bradley sort of, he said, I, I suggested to Ian Bradley, and Ian Bradley said, yes, yeah, sure, bring him in, we'll give him a test run. And um, I met Ian, totally at ease. The man knew what he was talking about. Um, <laughs> he was an extremely clever man. And he said, all right, look, we'll give you a month, uh, a, 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 you know, trial. And so it was very close to the end of the year, and we were getting to the go up for the year and we needed that hook, you know, that yes. hook to bring them back for next year. So we were sitting around a table and we sat there for, all, well, almost a full day and they couldn't get it. They, I knew what they were trying to do. I had an idea, but I thought, no, you, you're the new kid in the block, shut up. <laughs> and uh, so, and in the end, Ian simply said, well, Ian, you got an idea. And I said, well, all right, try this. And I told them. And then from around the table, I said, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I knew I'd got in. And what was the idea? Oh, the idea was that one of the screws was married. Yep. And uh, I've forgotten why his wife and kid were in, staying in the hotel. But anyway, uh, he came back on, the, on one day and just asked for his key at, at, at the reception. And um, the, the receptionist said, oh, uh, so the, uh, the parcel went up to your room. What parcel, he said. He said, oh, a chap with, I think I've forgotten his description, red hair. Um, Ray Mark. Yeah, Ray Mark. Yes. Yeah. That, that was your, so this is your story, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the, the, the bomb, blowing yeah, the bomb. Gerard Boyer's yeah. family, That's Jim right. Fletcher. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Wow, <laughs> oh, I never knew that. Yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, should I smile? <laughs> <laughs> that's very obvious, isn't it? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. So that was your idea? Yeah, but I knew immediately. I said, okay, that's the end of you. <laughs> you <laughs> test trial. <laughs> and it was. He said, right, hey, you're on. So th then, uh, look, I've been very lucky all the way through the business. When I started off in the musical theatre, I started for Williamson's and Garnet Carroll's uh, and the Tilly. The Tilly, yes. And the Tilly, yes. And, uh, I, I always had these wonderful, very experienced people to look at, and I looked at, and I took, no, I didn't take notes, I took mental notes. Yes. And uh, with Williamson's, I'd stand in the, in, in the uh, offstage when I, well, when I could, in the wings when I could, and watch the overseas imports. They were good, they were good. I watched the Americans, I watched the English. Uh, I don't know why I prefer the English. I don't know why, because the Americans were great. I'm mean, just I'm a snob, I guess. <laughs> um, but I, and uh, they were just wonderful. The good people were wonderful people, because they had nothing to prove. Yeah. There was the people who were uncertain, who were a bit edgy. They were the ones who were hard to get on with. And when I went overseas in the later years, after I joined those, and we'd go over to do pantos, the people you shared the bill with, if they'd made it, if they were good big names, they were a joy to work with. But if they were still trying to get up to the, the top of the heap, um, they, they weren't very nice people. Yeah. 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 And do you enjoy theatre more than TV? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, I do. Yeah. 
I, I would love to do one more, one more play before I, I mean I have retired, but, um, but one more before I say ta-ta, you know, you know. Well, you've got another 20, 30 years to oh, go, so I mean, How old am I? 82, 83, 83. Well, and you know, look 83. <laughs> no, look 83. Yeah. Now with Neighbours, you've got the part of Harold Bishop from Jan Russ, who we've spoken to on this mm. show. Mm. And what was it like getting the call from Jan? Oh, from well, Neighbors? I knew Jan quite well, of course. Yes. Uh, um, well, it, it wasn't quite like that. It, I think. When, when Prisoner was finishing, uh, Reg Watson, one player is another champion of, of the entertainment business. Which I wanted to ask you about Reg. Oh. Did you meet Reg? Oh, okay. yes. yeah. A beautiful man. Um, and we didn't do him a very good turn, the cast of Nervous, I must say, but there you go. Um, uh, at the end, he said, "In uh, would you like to write for this show, Neighbours? Get a few... I, I had a, a new show coming up. I'd been offered a new show as a script editor coming up. It hadn't started. And uh, I had five weeks in between the finish of, um, uh, of Prisoner and when I'd be starting script editing the new show. And uh, I said, well, well, yes. He said, we only want you to uh, be... A, he said, it'll be a five-week show, he said. When I told him that, he said, well, that's fine. It'll take five weeks exactly. So uh, I did five weeks and I got onto the studio for this. And I had this script about this guy called Harold. And uh, I couldn't quite find that something. That's something that, that you want to find about every character. Something that will make the people think about the character. So no, I was for it. and then in the middle of the five weeks, the new job fell over. Oh, okay. I thought, oh boy, okay, <laughs> let's really start looking for this thing there. Anyway, it was um, you know, maybe the sixth or seventh week. Um, I did something in the rehearsal, the camera rehearsal, and the camera crew laughed. And you've got to make it good for the camera crew to laugh because they're not easy to make laugh. I thought, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> And uh, so I sort of had an idea, so I did it again and they laughed again. I said, right, that's it. And that's where the old bumbly, yes. silly old fart came from. And so I applied that to Harold and, and oh, I think it was only within the second week I got offered straight away a, a, wow. a, a 12 month contract. So, yeah. Yes, and that's how he started. That's how it started. From a five week tryout. <laughs> amazing, amazing. <laughs> Don't laugh, him, you haven't got a <laughs> And I mean, I grew up watching Harold on TV, so oh. if you told me, you know, that long ago I'd be sitting here talking to you, I wouldn't believe you. It's absolutely Isn't it funny how I've amazing. Watched, huh? I mean, we just yes. loved Harold on, on Yes, TV. I go over to England and all of a sudden I find myself sharing a, 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 a television talk show with, with somebody I've been. Oh, you're great. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting next to them, you know. Yeah, and they asked me for an autograph for their niece. <laughs> and that happened with one of the Beatles. Oh, wow. Can you believe that? George. Really? really? Yeah, yeah. We went to a, there's a, a, a ball, uh, an annual ball over there. It's called the Water Rats. And uh, it's all the people in the business. And that year, the emphasis apparently was on uh, guitarists. Yes. And all the big guitarists were, oh, name a name, and they were there. Anyway, he came up to me and uh, he said, Ian, I hope you don't mind, Ian, not excuse me, what's your name? I'm a Beatle. Uh, George Harrison. George Harrison, wow. yeah. Could I have a, a, a photo taken with you for my niece? And uh, was that his niece? I'm not sure, I think it was yes. his niece. And, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the things that happen. Yes, the things I've, that happen. I've actually, I've just to go off topic, I've got a story about George Harrison. So I, I knew someone that was living in the UK and he was telling me this story. He was in a band yes. and they were at a party and George Harrison walked in with a, a tape and said, look, I want to play this tape, listen to this tape. So the, the, all these rock stars were there and they played this tape and they're going, George, this is absolutely sh shit, what, what, what is this? And it was a Travelling Wilburys. No. Yes, they were all laughing at it. And then it became obviously, you know, Roy yeah. Orbison and, yeah. and George. I mean, absolutely amazing. But it's just, it's funny how, you know, they're all having a, a dig at it. That yeah, must have been a magical 
all the time. Yeah. Must have. It would have been. Yeah. Oh, definitely. definitely. Do you miss the, the, the you know the sixties and seventies and eighties of, of of TV and theatre? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's well, so yes, different. That's when I was finding out. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's nothing greater than that. Is it? Yeah. I mean, when you expect look, if you're madly in love with something, yes, you find out. You know, oh, God, I must get home and try that. I must get home and try that. See. When I very, very first started, um, I remember my, I think it was Thomas. Thomas, Thomas side, side, yeah. I think it was a, I can remember, it was called the Wasp Nest. Now, why would I remember that? It was my first part, really. No, not really, because I did, uh, you know, him that you must mention on stage? Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, that show, uh, I did one of those, and, and that was wonderful. That That was my... There's a camera over there and it's on me. I'm a TV star, no, you're not your extra. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was in the best of times. Yeah. The best of times. times. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the difference in, you know, I was watching the, the great booking robbery that Ian Bradley um, made yes. about a year ago. And just watching it, it's just, it's amazing. You know, the, uh, yes. TV and, and shows and movies were sure. then. Yeah. Ian, if you're watching this, I'd love to meet up with you. You know, our last meeting wasn't that. Good. I've got all these details, I'll give them to you. Oh, if you would. Yes, definitely. Please. Definitely. I was in the middle of a, of a huge falling out of black hole, followed by a black dog, and uh, I met him in the Terrible. Um, now, you were careful to not write any episodes that you were uh -huh. in with Neighbours. Was there a reason for that? Well, yeah, there's something worse than being on the studio floor and another actor saying, who wrote this shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's best to separate yourself. Yes. It is best. Yeah. Um, when I first joined the office, or, or the brass, as the uh, actors call them, I had to tread carefully. Yeah. I had to tread, especially if I went to the studio. Um, and then, um, what was the name of the character? I did go into prison. Uh, Ted Douglas. Ted, Ted Douglas. Yes, which we want to talk about shortly, yes. Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, Ted Douglas. Yes. Yeah. And that didn't turn up. That's how he ended up in there. But, okay, so that was a rumour going around online. There's a lot of people talking about that. So that is definitely... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm in the office editing anyway, and, and they yell out, hey, Smithy, um, put your other hat on. I said, what are you talking about? They said, so-and-so, so-and-so didn't turn up to, to, to play uh, the, the, the department the pub. Yeah. I said, oh, come on, you must be in there. Because <laughs> I really didn't want to. Isn't it funny? Yeah. I would have killed for that part. Wow. You know, a, a year before that, but no. I was enjoying editing. It was beautiful. I loved that job. Wow. And um, <laughs> so I got down to the oh, because they were a tough bunch. That cast. There, there's some beautiful people there, people that I've made friends with and to this day. But uh, anyway, I got there and I, I could feel the, the steely coldness from a few. Uh, not from all, but, but from a few. And uh, anyway, it, uh, it, went, it went well. So, but then I got back and I said, Smithy, that's great. We're going to make him permanent. <laughs> <laughs> He was such a great character, though. Yeah, he was, he was a stodgy. He was a stodgy yeah. so and so, wasn't he? I mean, I remember the first scene you pulling up in the uh, the Ford LTD with the plush carpet inside the car, and uh, do you remember? I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, I've watched Prisoner so many times, and uh, the music that was playing was really? classical music, and you're driving in, and it's like the <laughs> hell of the party is here. Oh and, dear, you know, working um, with Patsy King. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I always come in saying to her, look, I'm sorry, if you can't do the job, we'll find someone who can. Yes. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it turned out he was corrupt with Lionel Fellows, uh, played by Will Juma. Yeah, uh, Willie. Yes, yes. yes. That's another, right. Another, another actor we've had on as well. Mate. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what a marvellous face Will's got. Yes. For, for, for the camera. I mean, you've run away. Sorry, Will. <laughs> you, 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 hmm. He actually played six characters on he Prisoner. Did. Yeah. He and he said the best thing about it was getting the free cigars. You <laughs> 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 love the cigar. Oh, I think you love it. I can't Sorry. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I worked with Will before in, in Music Hall as well. Yes, yes. And uh, he, he was a, a well-defined artist, Will. Yeah. He really was. He, wow. uh, 
He thought about what he was going to do, he planned it, and he did it. Yeah. And it worked, most yeah. of the time, yeah. Do you remember who was meant to play Mr. Douglas? The end no. Of the no. I've got a suspicion I know, but he's still alive, so I won't say. <laughs> I won't say. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I like to ask this question, but what did Harold teach Ian in life? You played Harold for so long. Yeah, and, yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah. Um, I found out that I wasn't anywhere near, funny word, humble enough. Um, but you see, when I, when I was trying to find something for him, it was all right for him to be humble, not for me. Yeah. But I found that people liked him. I thought, okay, what's that mean? So I applied a bit of that to myself. It sort of worked a bit. Yes. I, I certainly found out what my faults were. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He, he could forgive people, I can never forgive. I could, I can now, uh, but that comes with age, I think. But then Forgiveness is a hard thing. Oh, it's, it's the hardest job in the world. Really hard. Yeah, yeah. No, I used, to, I used to say I'll carry this to the grave, but it was a stupid, it was a waste of effort. Yes. You use up too much energy. Hey? <laughs> you do, you just use up too much energy. It does, it does. <laughs> that hurt. Oh, oh, what, a, I mean, what, what a legend, he's had a tooth out and uh, we're, still, we're still doing this interview, absolutely ah. amazing. Um, now I'm sure you've been asked this question a thousand times, but mm. what was it like working with Kylie and Jason? Uh, look, it was wonderful, okay, yeah. okay that, that's out of the way, it was yeah. wonderful. <laughs> because, who would you think, of what, was, what would have I been? I would have been 40 I suppose, in my 40s, Yeah. anyway. And I could still look at Kylie, who was a teenager, a young teenager, I think, and learn something. Yeah. I watched her, <laughs> we used to get people ringing us in the green room saying, would you like to stand behind my product? And uh, I remember a guy ringing me and saying, uh, we, we just done se uh, some episodes about Harold snoring and Madge moving out of the room, you know. And, uh, he said, I've got a snoring product, a oh, snoring yeah. product. Yeah. He said, uh, would you like it? I can get you into TV week. I said, mate, it takes me all my time to stay out of TV week. <laughs> and he, so he just went, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, now, what was I saying? Yeah. And, and if I had a scene to do with the two of them, I had to really really be sure what I was doing before I went in. Uh, because otherwise, there, there have been actors that I've loved their work, but I didn't like working with them because I had to work too hard to keep up with them. Yeah. And, um, and, and there was almost that, and he was this 40 year old, who'd been in the game for, I don't know, a lot of years. Uh, well, at least about 25 years by that time. and. I, my stupid pride made me feel uh, it's got to be good here. It was absolute rubbish. They would have fitted in with whatever I did. But, you know, um, pride thy name is Smith. <laughs> um, now, Anne Charleston and Maggie uh, Miller. Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Anne Charleston in particular, Annie Miller, of course. Anne Miller, Annie Miller, yeah, of course. But uh, I've had, what, one, two, three wives, television wives. And I, gee, I've been lucky because I've, I've worked in shows, uh, uh, neighbours being one, where there have been husband and wife, wife teams and they didn't get on. It was so sad. Yes. Because they were both, they'd both be fine actors and they couldn't do what they were capable of because they were too busy challenging each other all the time. Whereas Anne and I just did that. Yeah. When I was learning my words, I knew what, how Anne was going to do it and she told me the same thing. So we, we really didn't need uh, a, a rehearsal. We needed for the camera. Just natural. Yeah. Because we just knew what yeah. we were going to do. We were almost, we almost ended up husband and wife to be quite honest. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I was married for 50 years. Yes. And you do that. Are you married? I've got a partner. Yeah, okay. Yes. Well, you know, you yes. know, you know that person so well. You do. 
that if you've got a bit of a dicey subject to bring up, you know what the reply is going to be. Yes. And that's how you, I think, in the end, make yourself a better person. Yeah. I think so. No, definitely. Have yeah. I answered the question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Now, one thing I really loved about Neighbours was your relationship with Lou, Tom Oliver. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely oh, amazing. We, we, um, used to, we used to do some, <laughs> oh, we did some bad things. <laughs> <coughs> Was there one thing you did where you used to write things on, on props? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> one day, one day. I had one scene where I, I had one word, I can't remember what it was, and I couldn't remember it. And this was, it was getting ridiculous. And so there's a bowl of fruit on, in, in the kitchen, and, and I wrote the word on the top apple, placed it there. And as I walked in the door, he picked up the apple and picked the word. And I thought, oh, you bastard, you bastard. But I have got him back. I have got him back. I remember one scene, and thank, thanks the director, thank you. That's my truth, that's, yeah. that's my excuse. Yeah. Thank God for the director we had, Tony Osigo. Tony, yes. He let us go through with it. It, it, it was a scene where we were discovering what age was doing to our bodies. And I came in to the kitchen and he had bent down to pick up something and collapsed to the floor in, in the script. Yep. And <clears throat> I had bent down to try to get him up and my back went. And I went down on the floor, but then we took over. Uh, because I think I said something, oh God, look at us. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, look at on the floor, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, you know. And he got on to it because he's, you know, he's an intuitive actor. Yes. And he got on to it. And we just sat there and laughed. And every time, and we, we're right now. <laughs> well, Tony kept it. And we got so many, feed, so much feedback wow. from that. And it was just a stupid nothing thing that we've all done yeah. and we can all associate. But it worked. It but it funny. worked. It yeah. worked. Yeah. yeah. Now, you, you had the best, I mean, you talk about on-screen chemistry with uh, Anne oh, Charles and oh. Tom Oliver was just, I mean, you guys were. <laughs> yes. That, that was a show just there with you and him. Yes. I, I, <laughs> oh, the, thank God the audience didn't know something. <laughs> uh, there was, just before they got married, they went away for a weekend and, and Madge was determined to be a naughty weekend and uh, Harold couldn't. No, no, no. So he put a bolster down the middle of the bed. But you should have heard the conversation before they said action. It was filthy. <laughs> I, I mean, it was disgusting. <laughs> and then he said action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was good fun. I miss that. That's, that's what I miss in retirement. I do. I love yeah. it. But that, uh, that final scene with you and Anne, mm. you know, it was a real tearjerker. I mean, it, it got me. And yeah. I mean, it was it probably go down in history like the scene from uh, Country Practice with Molly yes. dying. I mean, what's, yes, it, what's it like filming oh. something like that? Knowing that she's going to you know, leave in the show as well. Just terrible. Yeah. Just shocking. Yeah. And she wasn't happy. She wasn't happy with the ending uh, for a reason I won't tell. Yeah. But um, uh, it was awful. It was dreadful. Yeah. Um, and we had two young fellows, uh, <coughs> Jonathan Dutton, and, um, oh, for God's sake, I haven't seen him for so long. Spencer, oh, Jason, Jason Spencer. Yep. Jason Spencer. And it, it, it w must have worked because they were, they were a mess. Yeah, yeah. They were a mess. Well, was too. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, yes. But I tell you what, uh, it's close to the truth because when my wife died, uh, it was almost a record of their scene. Yeah, no, the are, are, are that. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, death is hard. I mean, I lost oh. my mum in uh, 2017 and it's... Um, Did you? Yeah, and I, I, you know, everyone says about death, like, it gets easier, it'll, it'll get easier. No, it never, never gets easier. Never gets I, I don't know how they can say that. Gail died in 20, uh, 2019 and... Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's uh, very sad. 
On a lighter note, now Harold played the tuba, which you absolutely apparently didn't like the tuba. Was that right? Oh, I couldn't even pick the triangle or something. You know, <laughs> the recording the tuba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, but I uh, look. Uh, if it's if it's part of your character, yes. Uh, I ask for uh, a tuba player. What's he a tuberist? Yeah. Or is that a gardener? Um, and they got this wonderful guy, and, and I just said, would you play something? I still can't work out when you, you know, on a violin, if you're going up, your finger goes up, but if you go up in notes, in, 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 you don't go a higher, uh, yeah. I just don't know how they do it. Yeah. But uh, I was in Fiddler on the Roof at the stage play as well, and I played the clarinet at the wedding. <laughs> I used to watch every orchestral rehearsal, watch the clarinet. And um, I must have done it too well because the stage manager came up and said, the uh, Musos union were who demanding you be a, oh, wow. a union. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh. So there you go. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I, I know this question you've probably been asked again a thousand times, but the, the ending of Neighbours, mm. um, one thing that stood out to me was we interviewed Zimmer Anderson mm. um, a few months ago, and her answer was that the ending of Neighbours was really sad, also because it was a training ground mm. for so many up-and-coming actors yeah. to be able to learn from people like yourself. Yeah, well, um, gee, I was super, super kids. Yeah. I mean, they really were wonderful, wonderful kids. <coughs> In the past, yes, good, but there were too many of them just wanted to get on the front page of the magazine. And you could tell who they were. Yeah. Because when when you're doing a scene, sometimes you've got in peripheral vision, you just sort of sit on head, stick, st stick around the, the, the side of a, piece, a set. And that was a kid who meant it. They were looking. They, yeah. they were doing what I was doing on stage. Yes. Uh, standing in the wings, watching the imports. <coughs> and uh, so you'd be inclined to go up to them and say, hey, you know, buddy? Yeah, good, good. Any problems with scripts? Oh, would you mind? No, come on, let's go. And, um, and it was, oh, yeah. it was so good for the ego, too. Yeah. <laughs> this kid thinks I know something. <laughs> Don't get sucked in, kid. <laughs> no, but you, you found out things you, you found out that you knew things you didn't think you knew. Yeah. And it, it was good. It was good for both parties. Yeah, it was definitely. Super. Yeah. Definitely. I just did a um, uh, an ad up in Sydney, and there was this young girl up there who was a stand-up comic, um, and I just looked at her. I thought, "Gee, would you know what you're doing? You, this isn't the when you walk in here. This isn't the first time you've seen this script. Yeah. Um, even though." She had already walked in and she wasn't to play this part. And they said, no, give it to her. Because they also saw that this kid was on. She was, she was on to something. And uh, so I watched her and I found her watching me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and uh, I, I said to her, I said, gee, I'd love to come and watch one of your gigs. And I asked her over the moon. So she's going to let me know when she comes down. To oh, the amazing. Room. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's lovely when that happens. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Definitely. Now I've interviewed a lot of people from um, shows over in, in the States, um, from mm. The Sopranos and, and Breaking Bad and a few different shows. And I, I like to ask this because you'd be so well recognised as Harold and, and other oh, right, shows yes. that you've been on. Where's yes. the weirdest or strangest thing that's happened with a fan in out in oh, public? I was attacked. I was an anti-fan. His oh. girlfriend was a fan. And there was the trouble. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, he was on television. So what? He was rubbish anyway. Really? Yeah, oh, tech, full, loud voice in, in Bunnings. Oh, in Bunnings? Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> so I just, and I, item by item by item, I don't do that. I, I, yes. I, there's no need to do it. He's the loser from the start. Yes. But I, I don't know, he just got under my skin. And uh, he walked away, and his girlfriend, she was almost in tears. She said, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she, that's all she said. She said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I felt the bubble over me. He was saying, leave him. If you think that, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, but look, yes, all sorts of 
Um, uh, in in the letters, it's mostly the letters are mostly from the UK. Yes. And those letters were very interesting when it came to the young actors. Because most of them had not had an awful lot to do with older people. And the older people were the ones that their family had left them. Yeah. And they had adopted the people in neighbours yes. as their family. And occasionally you'd see a kid just break down. The old person had died and uh, someone over there had recognised what was happening between the two of them and written the letter to the kid. Oh wow. And it was super <coughs> for the kids. It gave them it gave them something apart from acting. Yeah. To learn about. Wow. And they had the decency to cry. And that's what I what yes. affected me. They had the decency to to cry. Wow. I thought, oh well you you meant it then, yes. Amazing. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Now, before we get on to Prisoner, I'm just going back to Neighbours, yes. going back for the finale. What was that like going back with some, you know, people like Paul Keane and <laughs> Guy Pearce, Eddie oh. Jones? I mean, all the, the Neighbours alarm you. I mean, they, what champion people? Yeah, yeah. Paul Keane, what a lovely man. I mean, I know he oh, is. this guy, he, he's sort of the essence of humble, I suppose. I wish he wasn't, because <laughs> that makes him in his own mind less than what he really is. It's, he's a fine... <laughs> actor, he is. a fine actor, but he doesn't get enough opportunity to show it. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about Guy Pearce. I, I can't find Actually, going back on, so Paul Keane, yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember back in Neighbours in the early days of Paul Keane and his on-screen mum, Myra de Groot. Yes, Elaine. Myra. I mean, she was just... Yes. And I had no idea, she was only 54 when she passed away. No. She was so young. Why, she? <clears throat> yes. Because on the show, they made it look so, sort of so old. And, um, well, yes. Yeah, and she acted. Yes. That age yes. as well. Yeah. Gee, she fooled me. Yeah. Come on. Amazing actress, though. Yeah. 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 Um, she gave me the uh, CD of musical chess, and uh, oh, wow. a week before I planned to give it back to her, she died. Oh, my gosh. So I thought, oh, what do I do? <laughs> so I said, keep it in memory. I said, yeah. all right, I will. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. No, you've gone back to... I went to Young Myra to Oh, uh, yeah. And also, it brought a lot of strange people out of the woodwork, as far as fans. Yes. Uh, there was this one chap. Oh, my gosh, he caused me a bit of trouble. Oh, uh, really? he, not intentionally. He just... Uh, I didn't know how to handle him. He wasn't well. Um, I, I mean, up here. Yeah. He wasn't well. He wrote... The first letter was something like nine pages. Nine pages? Wow. Writing. We didn't want to let out too much, you know. Yeah. And uh, he realised that uh, I knew about the IRA and the CIA. Okay. And what I didn't know that they were there after him. It sounds like I'm making fun of him or not. No. He went, uh, and it, it would go on. He got home okay. He was alive. It was always at the end of the day he was alive. Um, and then he, he, then one holiday he used uh, his special train pass. I guess it was something that patients yes. get. And uh, he said, so I, uh, I used it. And I got to Scotland and I stumbled into an IRA cell. They discovered me at the same time, so I had to disappear. I got home alive. And now I find that the CIA were also aware of that cell and they saw me hanging around so they think I'm part of that cell. I'm not. Wow. Oh. So, and, and these letters kept coming. So I didn't answer them because I didn't know if I was qualified to answer them. Yeah. So I gave them to our legal department and I said, I don't know what to do about this. And they followed it through very well. They they got a psychiatrist over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. They tried to find his psychiatrist. Yes. Uh, to let them know what he was doing here, and apparently it worked out quite well. Okay, that's mm. good. Story. I never heard from him when it stopped. Yeah. Again, I mean. Wow. Technique for learning lines. I know every okay. actor's got a different technique. Okay. Uh, for how they remember their lines. Well, I'll tell you something that I have just discovered because I am forgetting things. I am. 
Well, I, I forget what I did yesterday, and I'm 44. Uh, well, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, but you want drugs and booze. Drugs. <laughs> no. um, do you know what I've just discovered? I've, I've discovered a new technique. How old am I? I'm in my 80s. I've discovered a new technique. Technique. I get my character to learn the lines. Okay. If Ian Smith learns the lines, he's more inclined in the transition to giving those lines to his character. He gets a bit muddled up. So I said, cut out the middle man. I just said it as a joke to myself because <laughs> I was having a bad time. Yep. And um, so I said, okay, I'll get my character done. Yeah, it worked like a dream. Wow. Try it, folks. It may, only, it may be a personal thing, but let your character learn the lines. It's already, you learn them, and then you don't have to put the character to the line. You learn them in character. Wow. I don't ask me to explain it further than that. That's a great advice, though, definitely. Yeah, I, 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 I mm. Definitely. Now, the, I'm not sure if you have any memories of these actresses that are on Prisoner. Sheila Florence, oh, Gerda yeah. Nicholson, Betty Bobbitt. Gerda Nicholson was my one of my most favourite friends ever. Oh, well, she was my posh friend. Posh friend? Yes. <laughs> yes. I heard she was, she was a very peaceful, oh, very peaceful. did the Tai Chi, sure. and it was very... Sure. Wow. You know, when I found out that I was... Um, uh, 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 adopted. I just wanted her to be alive. She wasn't. She died yes. by then. I just wanted her. I just wanted to go to her. Yeah. Because she would have calmed me down straight away. I knew that she would have done, but she just wasn't there. And uh, that was one of my greatest regrets. Yes. You, you, uh, go ahead. Yes. There were some people <coughs> in that show that I really, really didn't like. Didn't like. Okay. The, yeah. They were the people who were unsure of themselves. Uh, Goethe, she was quite safe. She knew what she was. Yes. She knew that she was capable. She knew you give her a scene, uh, she would look after it as best she could. She would look after it to a point where she had no worries about presenting it to her audience. These other people, if it didn't work for them, it was somebody else's fault. Uh, bloody writers, bloody writers. directors, bloody, you know. Um, Some people don't like to take blame for... No, no, yes. no. If they just slow down, and, you know. I'm a bit inclined to go up to people whose work I admire and say, look, I'm having trouble with that. They said, oh, oh, da, 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 da. oh why didn't I think of that? Thank you. See you later. You know. Yes. Um, but some people don't. Some people whose work I, in the first instance, I don't admire. Yeah. So I'm not saying I don't like, I just don't admire. Oh. I wouldn't have done it like that. Yeah. And uh, haven't we all said that? Yes, <laughs> we have. Um, and, you know, obviously you worked with Patsy King as well. I mean, I remember mm. one scene in particular where Patsy had gone and uh, Mr. Douglas was sitting in the office yeah. and uh, Meg walked in, Elspeth Allen. Oh, time. yes, Meg. Oh. Yeah. Well, any memories of Elspeth? Oh, she was so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we were all getting ready to go to the Oscars one night. Uh, the, uh, the Logies. The, the Logies. Yes. And um, we you should, should be at the Oscars. You should be at the Oscars. <laughs> you, you deserve an Oscar. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, and we were all ready. We we're just waiting for the limos to come and pick us up. But there was still one scene. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. We'd all finished work. Anyway, one of the young, beautiful uh, girls came and she sort of dropped it beautiful. And Elspeth got up. I shall be a good half hour. And, <laughs> and left. <laughs> she thought she was ready until she saw this. <laughs> oh, she went back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she shall be a good half hour. <laughs> uh, yeah. well, what was it like at the Logies? You, I hated it. the Logies. You hated it? Oh, it was a really worst night. Worst <laughs> night. And they, ne they would never invite my wife, so most times oh, my I would never go. Oh wow! I would never go. I'd only go when go when they would invite Gail. They'd only invite Gail if I were was up for something, which well, I think happened twice. I think. I I'm, I'm shocked that you've never had a gold like me. I mean, oh no, no. you deserve. And uh, no, no, when you got a face like this, uh, you got to be ugly. <laughs> you got to be uglier than this. <laughs> um, uh, um, I think I was nominated for. Oh, yeah. I think I was nominated. Yes. But gone for what I can't remember. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember what the other thing was. 
But uh, look, it, it, it's terribly boring. Yes. It really is. Have you not been to one? No, no, I've not been to one, no. Jeez. <laughs> I, look, and I'm wishing you well. I hope you never do. <laughs> Well, up on the Gold Coast, yeah, but they're not even in the home. Or oh, that's right. Yes. Melbourne, yes. yes. Melbourne yeah. woke up to it. Yeah. <laughs> got rid of it. Yeah. Are you, um, are you surprised at how popular... I mean, I'm not sure if you're on social media, but there's thousands and thousands of prisoner groups and neighbours groups on Facebook. And, uh, you know, one, yes. one prisoner group has got over 100,000 fans on it. I'm oh, still so talking to you about this day. Yeah. Um, are you surprised at how popular prisoner still is now? And they've had a remake. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I was aware how it was back then. I don't know how it is now with the new prisoner, which I think is fabulous. Have you watched one? Oh, well, wow. fabulous. Yes. And I envy the scriptwriters so much because they have licensed it. Yeah, I mean, I just got away with saying the word bloody. <laughs> uh, uh, I think we got bastard once too. But God, because you had to be very careful back then oh, with, with what you could get away with. There was a lot of restrictions. Sure. Yeah. There was one writer who wasn't a very good writer, by the way. And in fact, oh, there's a story. In fact, I had to, uh, but he kept trying to get Rudy's in. Um, you see, this is what's happening now. No, that's okay. Oh, okay. yes. Anyway, I had to ask him to leave, and he was so irate. Uh, because I had to do too much editing to his scripts and I didn't have the time. I was the yes. only editor for a long time, in the, not at the end. Um, and I, I told him over the phone, I said, if you'd like to come in. He said, are you going to sack me? I said, yes. And he, he said, right, slam. Then I got this letter. <laughs> he said, he could, And this is on prisoner? Yes. yes. He accused me of being the pe uh, the condom on the penis of creativity. <laughs> and I wrote back and said, if you'd been that clever when you were writing, I wouldn't have sacked you. <laughs> oh, well, because I mean, obviously a bad script is a lot of work for an editor. It's well, yes, and, and as an editor, I would get the writers in. I would have had the same writers all the time. All the time, because... Yeah, why, why did prison always have so many different writers? I don't know, it wasn't my idea. Okay. Because I was always saying, please, give them a good wage, keep them. They'll be scared to lose the wage and we will get the same show on the screen every time. Yeah. Because they will think prisoner. Um, and I would say to the writers, now you, you are, as I have done, objected to the editor because he will cut out good stuff. And I'll say, yes, it is good stuff, but it wasn't prisoner. And I, what I want is that every script that comes to me has to look like it's been written by the same person. Yes. Because that means the same show. We can't expect the audience to find characters suddenly having a different mode of speech or, or doing things differently. They don't want that. They watch the show because they're used to so-and-so being a silly old bugger or, yes. or somebody getting their hand put under the press or, yeah. you know. And uh, they all agreed, uh, except this one didn't. So uh, I put the condom on the penis of creativity. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, when we spoke to Brett Popperwell uh, just oh, last yes. week, actually, yes. and we were talking about Wentworth, how Wentworth was great because it was all in the one studio. Yes. It was all so built. Well. Yeah, yes. the production, everything was yes. there. Do you think shows have been a lot differently back back in the other days, the older days, that he, like Prisoner had its own office that wasn't at the studio. Oh, was, you mean the, the brass as well? Yeah, the brass. Oh, I, 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 I see what you mean, I see what you mean. Being together. I think it, it is so much better. Yeah, and Neighbours was like that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes. yeah. It, it, it was so much better to have everything there because you were that far, far away from improving something or correcting something. And uh, they were used to seeing you. It was awful yeah. back when. Uh, because prisoner, the office wasn't. It was a separate location. A separate location. Yeah. And if you wanted to go and talk to somebody quietly, you had a long journey. Yes. You know. Well, I well think sometimes it was good because yeah. sometimes you were angry. By the time you got the, yes. <laughs> you'd calm down, you know. Yeah. Uh, we spoke to Lisa Crittenden a few weeks ago, and uh, okay. who played Maxine Daniels, mm. Mm. and she told us a really funny story about being in a car with you, 
when uh, you wanted her character to stay on, but she didn't want to stay on because she wanted to do other things, and oh. you said, you, uh, well, we're going to have to kill you. Did I say I'm not sure you remember, I was going back a long time. No, I don't, I don't, I can't be honest with you. <laughs> but you really wanted a character to stay on, and yeah, uh, it, was, yeah. it was a funny story. Now, just talking about our producers on the show now, do you have any memories of Mari Trevor? Yes, I do. You yeah. do? I learned things from Mari. Yeah. Um, she was good. She was, yeah. she was good. She, uh, because she stood at both ends of the camera, and I think that's invaluable. Yeah. Uh, if you know what happens on the other end of the camera, you can plan for the other side of the camera with more certainty than somebody who hasn't. Yes. If you, if, if somebody who hasn't been to the other side of the camera, you're more inclined to think of the dollar, which you have to do, of course, I understand yes. that. <coughs> but if the accountants ever take over a show, that's when it starts to die. Yeah, yeah, because all they're worried about is the money. That's right. Yeah. I'm not sure if you remember this episode, um, and I'll, I'll, I'm just being conscious of time, mm. but there was an episode that you wrote, and the fans always talk about it, it was uh, the Lou Kelly riot, played by Louise Siverson. Mm. It was episode 600, it was a massive riot, riot and uh, Linda Stoner was uh, Eve Wilder, she got hung, there was a lot going on, and uh, it was actually written by yourself. Is it, it was, was a, yeah. Isn't it strict? I don't know. No, no, I mean, it's going back a long time. Mind you, if I remembered everything I'd done that was good, I might have a big head, so maybe it's best <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> and you were um, on the last episode, episode oh, 692, oh, you wrote, co-wrote, yes. Yeah, yeah, with Murray. Yes. Yeah, she wanted me to write the whole thing. I said, no, no. Come on, fair dues. Um, so you wrote it together? Well, she was an actor. Yeah. Well, no, sorry, I, I disagree with calling a woman an actor. Shall I tell you why? Yeah, definitely. Because I think women are lovely. They're the, oh, I'm not very proud of my gender, of our gender. Yeah, we've got a lot to, uh, oh boy, yeah, we have. Yeah. So why would a woman want to be the same as a man? I think they're important mm-hmm. enough to have their own categories. Yes. I think, yeah. Anyway, actress, sorry, go on, <laughs> argue about that, go on. <laughs> You know, now, there is a lot of rumours online about, were you the police officer in the last mm. episode of Prisoner putting the freak in the car? There's another one where another actor didn't turn up. The same story. Same. No, well, no. Well, different yes. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that was you. <laughs> yes, put me head. Yes. Hand on head. I don't know why. Oh, that's stopped that head from banging the door, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of arguments online about if that was you. So oh, no, no. We can confirm it here. That's me. Definitely that was me. They didn't pay me either. <laughs> Dear <laughs> Lord. And what do you think about the show ending? Do you think it could have gone on back then or it ended, it ended at the right time? No, I think it ended at the right time. There was a lot of scope. There was a lot of future stories. Oh, it could have gone on, yes. Yes. But no, I think let's make new television all the time. Yes. I was over in England uh, doing a Panama and... Um, Just going back on the Panama I mean, mm. what, what, they were amazing back in the, back oh, in the day. What was it like doing the Panama oh, I met, I think it's, around, it's either the 14th or the 16th of December where they start. And I, I if I'm in bed, my last year, we always have a dream about something that you've been doing or whatever. I always think, oh yeah, the curtain will be going up about now. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Hello, boys and girls, mums and dads, grandpas and grandmas. Wow. Are you all there? Did they say it, Mr. Musician? Yeah. No, I couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. And then they roar, of course. There's one very funny story. Uh, well, I think it was funny. Uh, it was in um, York. Yes. York, beautiful place. Anyway, and a lovely theatre. But I, I came out, you know, all pudgy and, you know, hello boys and girls, and the kid in the front row said, it's behind you. I thought, well, no, not yet, kid. I've got to say, if you see the witch, geez, you say, it's behind you. <laughs> hello, boy, he's behind, what's behind me? She, he said, your career. <laughs> <laughs> little, little bastard. 
<laughs> but apparently it happened every year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the management put him up to it every year. Oh, wow. Well. I've got some amazing memories of pantomimes. I remember um, my grandmother lived in Burwood at the time, and I used yes. to go to her house on school holidays a lot. And she would take me down to the pantomimes that were run by um, Terry Gill and Terry Gill, Carol. Yeah, you remember they, yeah. they did yeah, the yeah, pantomimes, yeah, and it's yeah. actually still there to this day. And I've taken my daughter when she was younger, and it just brings back so many yeah. memories yeah. of. Oh, they uh, just amazing. They're good. They're yeah. a good. Intro they're a good introduction to theatre for kids. Yes, definitely. They are. Exactly. <laughs> They go to a serious place and say, no, it's behind you. No, you can't do that. No. <laughs> can't do that. Um, now, before we wrap up, we, um, there's a couple of fan questions here if you're mm -hmm. okay to answer, but we were inundated. We had over 150 fan questions for you. Oh, okay. Obviously, I couldn't print okay. them all out, but I just took a few. Um, now, Anthony Burroughs said, please, can you ask Ian if it's true if he composed and performed some of the incidental music in Prisoner? No. No, you didn't? No, okay. no I didn't. No. Okay. Um, he also said, please thank Ian for everything he did for the show. It's clear to see his contribution was massive. I remember whenever it said, written by Ian Smith in the opening credits, we were in for a real treat oh, every thank time. You. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that. That was Anthony over in the UK. And uh, Louise Frost always said, wonderful news having Ian come on. What a legend. Um, Max Dweeb said, wow, what an absolute legend. A massive part of my teenage years. Loved him in prison and neighbours. Was there any storyline that you wanted to do in Prisoner and Neighbours that you weren't allowed to do? That's a map uh, from the UK. Yeah, there was. There was? There was. You remember they moved to another prison? There was uh, Barnhurst and Blackmore that they... Um, was it Blackmore? Anyway, there was... Um, the, the, the Queen Bee, the Queen Bee of the place that they were going to, was called the Monster. And you ought to, and all the dialogue was around the monster height, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And when I think it was Queen Bee uh, got there, the monster was a midget riding on the shoulders of a monster. Wow. And they wouldn't let me do it. No. Uh, <laughs> see, that's how, or even more politically correct back then than we are wow. now, and I think we're ridiculously. Oh, now it's oh, crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't talk no, anymore. No, you can't. <laughs> That's the story too. Let me yeah, whip this please. one in. Yeah. When we all got together back, all the oldies got together back in, in Neighbours, and we chat and we go, and you see, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, they came up to us one day, they said, oh, gee, we've had fun since you guys have been back. We're not allowed to say half the things you, oh, you guys have fun about. Yeah. And, uh, and we realised that we have been, we would be quite, well, rude uh, and very politically inco uh, incorrect. Yes. Uh, but they loved it. They said, oh, now we know what they've all been talking about. It was oh, super. It was like the golden days. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you don't know what to say. No, it's, no. it's hard. Um, Martin Dugan said, hi, Ian. Prisoner is my personal favourite Australian drama series ever. Thanks for your contribution to the show as an actor, producer, and skip writer. Um, Callum Greenborough also said, you are certainly an icon of Australian television. You exude warmth and wit. My question is, do you have any, any regrets over your career? Did you miss out on a certain genre of work yes. due to being on Neighbours for so long? Yes. Yes, I, I only ever did one film. And I would have loved to have done more. More film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the film producers didn't see me as their actor, so... I mean, I didn't get the offers. Yeah. That's as simple as that. Um, Is that because of being, like, typecast in, in that I, I think so, because... Yeah. <coughs> there was one... I left prisoner, <coughs> out of prison, neighbours, nice. a couple of times, and I was looking for work, but the people who were casting were young people, and, and they only knew me as so. Sarah. I, I mean, that's my excuse. I don't know whether that's the actual case, or they just didn't think I'd be a good film actor. Um, but yeah, yes, I, I would have loved to have done. I would still love to do a, a oh, film. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh boy. When I used to watch Guy, I actually watched a, a, a movie of his last night that I didn't know he made. Can't think of the name of it now, but once again, fantastic. Wow. 
Uh, Aaron Bond said, good old Jelly Belly himself. What an icon. My friends met him on a tour off the neighbor's set whilst living in Australia. They all concurred that he is an absolute gentleman, friendly, nice guy. Oh, great he's been one of me off stage. <laughs> Andrew Chapman also asked, Ian, who did you like to play most, Ted Douglas or Harold Bishop? Uh, Harold. Harold. Yes. yes, Harold. He was a mixture of a few people. He was a mixture of my adopted father. Okay. Uh, that was his awkwardness uh, in a given situation and his inability to handle My My adopted father was a lovely man, but he needed someone to look after him. You need to someone to take his hand and yeah. and say you know do this do that. Um, Ted, well Ted was <laughs> he was invented terribly quickly <laughs> by necessity. <laughs> but oh, I mean he did change a bit. But I, I now that I see I, and I do see it occasionally. I I don't think I'd have done that again. Okay. I don't think I'd have played it like that again. Wouldn't it? Well, it's a big pantomime the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't like that very much. Uh, uh, and Andy Steele said, thank you for your hours and hours of entertainment as Harold. You're a living legend up there with the great Ray Ma. That's Andy from the UK. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you for watching and, and giving the bosses the excuse to keep employing me. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, James Murphy said, adore this man and what a joy it was to see Harold as neighbours close. Um, can you tell us what it was like working with Coral Druin and Denise Morgan? Do you have any memories? Well, Denise Morgan was a wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. Uh, Denise, uh, Coral, had a fantastic... I, I worked with her first in, in musical. Yes, because she had all the theatre restaurants She did, well, yes. yeah. And uh, I learned a lot from her. Uh, doing that, in, do, in, in doing that, but she she could get the audience in the palm of her hand. Also, her brain was very fertile as far because she looked after the storylines. Yes, very fertile. Yeah, and uh, it was then handball to me. We didn't get. <laughs> we had quite a few arguments. Did Coral? You and Coral. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we've yeah. had Coral on a few times, and uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> she can be feisty, but uh, <laughs> she knows her product. Yeah. And that's what she's there. She's not there to be nice. She's there to put out a product. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Uh, last one is from Brett Bradley Horvath said, so excited for this interview. I'd also like to say a huge thanks to Ian for the amazing work he did on both Neighbours and Prisoner, both in front and behind the camera. <laughs> He's such a talent and a joy to watch and neither show would have been the same without him. How does he still look the same as he did 20 years ago? Oh, you need to go to Specsavers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not the same. It's not. <laughs> I was 40 when that happened. I'm 83 now. I can't look the same. I'm sorry. Well, you still look young. I've got to say a massive thank you for sure. myself. It's been an absolute pleasure thank and an honour to learn about your life and your career and speak to you and, and sit in the same room as you. Thank you. And, uh, and, and from the bottom of my heart as a fan as well, thank you for everything you've done for Australian television, all the shows, behind the scenes, front of the scenes. It's been uh, That's it, I've got a big head now. Absolutely. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. <laughs> that was episode 51 of Talking Prisoner. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this interview everywhere you can. And this will also be available on all the podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google, and wherever you get your podcast from, and also the talkingprisoner.com website. Thank you so much for watching. I used to give her roses. I wish I could again But that was on the outside And things were different then We built our world together Sharing all the love we'd known Till I had to face the nightmare of Waking up alone On the inside the sun still shines And the rain falls down But 
the sun and rain are prisoners too When morning comes around Sharing all the love we'd known Till I had to face the nightmare Of waking up alone On the inside the sun still shines And the rain falls down Prisoners too When morning comes around On the inside the roses grow They don't mind the stone ground But the roses here are prisoners too To give her roses I wish I could again But that was on the outside And things were different